Hey everyone, it's Justin again. Today, we're gonna solve rational equations a different way than in our previous lesson. Before, we practiced the cross product, and now we're going to use the least common multiple, or LCM. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to solve rational equations using the least common multiple. First, we'll discuss the differences between using the cross product and the LCM to solve. Next, we'll rework the final problem from the previous lesson using the LCM. Finally, we'll complete three additional practice problems. In the previous lesson, we used the cross product to solve rational equations. We were looking for equations with only one fraction on each side and denominators that didn't have any common factors. So both of these requirements had to be true in order to use the cross product. The goal for today is to get comfortable using the LCM, or least common multiple, to solve. We use the LCM when there is more than one fraction on a side of the equation, or when there is a common factor in the denominators. So, if one of these things is true, use the LCM. Or, if both of them are true. Let's look back at the final problem from our last video. We solved this using the cross product, but it ended up being more work than it needed to be. The reason for that was because the denominators did have a common factor and the LCM would have been an easier method. Take a moment here to pause and look back at your notes for this problem. Think about how difficult it seemed when we first solved it. Now let's try this problem again using the LCM method. As we get started, I want to remind you to pause the video and rewind any time you need to. We all work at different paces and there's nothing wrong with stopping to give yourself more processing time. All right, here we go. That problem is here again. And the directions say to solve the following equation for X. We figured out in the last video that the cross product was not ideal for this problem because we needed both of these requirements to be true. Unlike the cross product, when we use our LCM checklist, we just have to make sure that at least one of the requirements is true. And here, the second one is. So let's give this problem a try using the LCM. With the denominators factored, we can see that they both have an x plus 3 in them. So let's find the LCM of the denominators. If a factor is in one of these, it has to be in the LCM. And if there's a power, the highest power used has to show up in the LCM too. That's what happens here. Because the first denominator has x plus 3, but the second denominator has another x plus 3, this means that x plus 3 squared is our LCM. In previous videos, we actually got our denominators to be equal to the LCM. Now that we're solving, we just needed to know the LCM so we can multiply by it. So now our next step is to multiply every fraction by this LCM. In the first fraction, an x plus 3 cancels in the numerator and denominator and leaves us with x plus 3 times 1, which is just x plus 3. In the second fraction, x plus 3 squared cancels in the numerator and the denominator and we're just left with two. Wow, this just got so much easier. We subtract three on both sides and we're done. Oh, actually not quite. We just have to make sure negative one doesn't make any of the denominators equal to zero. We don't want to accidentally have an extraneous solution. So let's just substitute negative one in real quick and make sure. Okay, cool. Neither of these ends up equaling zero. So negative one really is the solution. Here's a second example. The LCM method is the best option for this problem because there is a common factor in the denominators. We see in the factored form that they have x plus two in common. So let's find the LCM of the denominators. If a factor is in one of these, it has to be in the LCM. Our first denominator has x plus 2 and x plus 1, so they have to be included. And the second denominator also has an x plus 3, so let's include that. This is our LCM. Now we multiply each term by the LCM. 
This step looks really long, but most of these cancel. So it's really not that bad. Actually, once we're done, this is all that's left. Pause here and make sure you have what you need in your notes for this step. I know it's a lot to look at. The great thing is with so much canceling, if we get rid of all that, this is what we have left. Ah, now this looks so much better. Let's finish solving this like we're used to. We can distribute here to get a trinomial on the left side. And we also can get a trinomial on the right side. The x squared actually cancels on each side. After that, we keep going. We get x isolated on one side of the equation. Then we can divide by three and get our solution. Well, maybe. We still have to make sure that it's not extraneous. This is a great place for you to try this part on your own. So pause the video and substitute one everywhere you see x here. See what these denominators would equal and make sure it's not zero. If we substitute one for x into the first denominator, we would have one squared plus three times one plus two. This would equal six. If we substituted in one for x in this denominator, it would become one squared plus five times one plus six. That equals 12. And since neither of those are zero, x equals one is the solution. We have two more examples for this lesson, and here's the next one. Which method is best for solving this? If you said the LCM method, you're right. That's the best option because there are two fractions on one side of the equation. It's also the best method because our denominators do actually share factors, which we can see here in the factored form. The first and third fractions have x minus 5 of the denominators, and the second and last fraction each have x plus 1. The next step is to find the LCM of the denominators. So what is the LCM for this problem? Our LCM this time is x minus 5 times x plus 1. So we multiply each term by that. Woo, that's a lot. It's okay though. We can cross out everything that cancels. And actually, this is all that's remaining. So pause the video here and make sure your notes are all caught up. Now we get to write this with only what's left. And it looks so much better this way. Let's keep going. It looks like we need to distribute here to get rid of these parentheses. Then we can start combining like terms. It looks like we're stuck with an x squared term here this time. It didn't cancel like in the previous problem, but that's okay. Let's get this equal to zero so we can factor it. Go ahead and factor this equation. Pause the video while you work on it and see if you can go even further and finish solving. Hmm, numbers that multiply to be negative 15 and add to be two? Ah, oh, okay, here we go. Then we set each factor equal to zero to get our solutions. Well, you know the routine by now. Can you check for extraneous solutions before we finalize the answer? If you haven't already, pause the video and check both negative five and three to see if either of them are extraneous. All right, if we substitute negative five into the first denominator, we get negative 10. The second denominator, we get negative four. And in the third denominator, we get 40. None of those ended up as zero, so negative five is a solution. Then we have to check three. It gives us negative two in the first denominator, four in the second denominator, and negative eight in the last one. None of these was equal to zero either, so we have two solutions this time. 
Here's our final example. Do you know which method is going to be the best for this? Is that the cross product or using the LCM? Hopefully you're thinking LCM for two reasons. First, there is more than one fraction on the left side of the equation. And second, there are some common factors in the denominators. So this means we need to find the LCM of the denominators. What's the LCM here? Our LCM this time is x minus 4 times x minus 2. So we multiply each term by that. Okay, here it is again. Lots of factors to cancel. Can you do the cancellation by yourself? Pause the video here and try. All right, let's see what you got. Here is everything that cancels. And then this is all that didn't cancel. Now we get to write only the terms that didn't cancel. We need to take care of the distribution next. So pause here and finish solving the equation, making sure to check for extraneous answers. We distribute the first set of parentheses and get this trinomial. Then we do the same with the next set of parentheses. Now, what do we need to do next? Well, there's a lot of terms on the left side that can be combined. 5x squared and 1x squared is 6x squared. Negative 24x and 21x is negative 3x. And finally, 28 and negative 100 is negative 72. Subtracting 3x from both sides gets this equal to 0. Now we can divide every term by 6, then factor it. Setting each factor equal to 0 gives us possible solutions of 4 and negative 3. We substitute 4 for x into the denominators to check if it's extraneous. <gasps> 4 minus 4? That's 0! And this is 0 too. So if any of the denominators are 0, it's an extraneous solution. So no, 4 is not a solution to this equation. We have to check all our possible solutions because more than one of them can be extraneous. So let's also check negative 3 in all the denominators. Negative 3 would not make any of these denominators equal to 0. So this is our only solution. Now you can solve rational equations using the LCM. Remember to refer to the table from the beginning of the video if you're unsure of the best solving method. You'll use either the cross product or the LCM. And after using one of these methods, your equation may have x squared and need to be factored. In a future lesson, we're going to get to use these skills to solve real world problems. See you then. Hey!